get things in order. Well, God, I want to thank you one more time for your presence in our lives. I give you honor. I give you glory. Satan, you are not invited here. The atmospheric realm belongs to God. This very moment belongs to God. Lord, I commit each and every individual. Give them heart of receptivity, a mind to comprehend. To comprehend. Use me in the area of clarity and anoint every word that proceed out of my mouth. Confirm what you are speaking through me today, O Lord, with signs and wonders. In various homes, those who are watching today and those who will be watching later, confirm your word with signs and wonders. In Jesus' matchless name, I pray now with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Uh, today is episode 9 of uh, the series I've started entitled Apologetics, which is philosophical and logical defense of the Judeo-Christian belief system. I um, again I want to just uh, repeat myself here if you have not watched any of these episodes you may want to go back to episode one that was when the foundation is laid you know philosophy most philosophers you know uh, cannot give definitive definition of philosophy I do my best to give the way I understood philosophy is to give some definition to that. Um, I, you might want to go watch. I, I, I say it is rational or coherent, you know, uh, inquiry, uh, uh, you know, and then logic. Uh, I believe if they, they were the same words that I used in the first um, episode. And uh, logic, uh, in the simplest term that I understood, logic is uh, logic is simply uh, a systems or a system of laws of thought and argument. Um, so when I say apologetics, philosophical and logical defense of the Judeo-Christian belief system. Well, all I'm referring to is uh, these rational or coherent uh, inquiry of what we believe and how we come to believe it, and how we can we can uh, uh, defend why we believe what we believe, uh, which is why it is. Uh, systematic laws of thought and argument. So, I I had done a, a contrasting, a contrasting views, uh, opposing views of uh, Islam and Christianity. I'll be doing others on uh, Buddhism and uh, Hinduism. Uh, Christian cults like Mormonism and uh, Jewish witness and other uh, religions and other forms, uh, you know, that has uh, emerged that you may probably haven't even heard about. Uh, so we'll be doing that in the near future. But today, in today's episode uh, nine, you know, since time immemorial. Uh, in human history, uh, in human history, you, you know, uh, humanity has been confronted with religion of, of all sorts. I believe, yeah, since time immemorial, human history has been confronted with religion of all sorts. 
the 21st century, in my opinion, is not unique. In, in that sense, it is not unique. However, our culture seems to embrace more of these quasi or pseudo religions of our times. If you know what I mean by that. The imagined deep yearnings of humanity's need for God in the culture of polytheism and pantheistic philosophy cannot be satisfied without knowing the true God of the cosmos. Without an iota of doubt, the Judeo-Christian religion has the answer not only to spiritual needs of humanity but moral and ethical needs as well. You know, I in my studies lately I ran into uh, uh, during my counseling uh, section and I ran into something that was appealed to me so much and that I, I've been using. You know, you hear folks talk about, I'm spiritual, I'm spiritual. I believe you may have run into folks who said, I am spiritual, but it is only in the Judeo-Christian believism that we can attach words to our spirituality to make it authentic religion. A religion that has content. Because when you hear a lot of folks, they say, I'm spiritual. But for us, you, we can be spiritual and we can add words to our spirituality to, to prove to folks why our religion is the only religion. On your screen, you see, I say, today in episode 9, why Islam is appealing or appeals to African-American males. I was thinking about, uh, you know, it's, there's a whole history about a nation of Islam. And I'm just trying to see how I can make it, uh, uh, simplify it, uh, uh, you know, good enough for us to understand and how we can apply and how as a Christian and, then, and again these teachings is to if you are a Christian is to encourage you is to encourage you is to truly encourage you because you don't want to be looked down upon you don't want to be ridiculed you don't want to be uh, become a subject of mockery and you don't have to capitulate to that standard of those who thinks that they are better than you because quote unquote they meditate I begin to think about certain words that I uh, through my studies I talk about you know meditation for instance when you uh, look to these folks who uh, promote, you no know, worship uh, polytheism, but promotes pantheistic ideology or philosophy, tend to uh, appeal only to the subjective aspect of things. What do I mean by that is, it, uh, although you know the the our uh, receptive sensories are not bad because it is through that we can know the objective reality of our belief but when it is limited to only the subject the subjectivism that is when it becomes real a uh, relative so some if you you are not equipped if you don't know uh the core belief system of some of these uh, uh, 
quasi religions then you will not be uh, adequately you will not be in a position to adequately defend your position as the only true religion is that just think about it many roads or many ways does not lead to the same destination so this teachings has to encourage you gotta encourage you so much so that you are well equipped and again um going back to what i was talking about pantheistic or within this polytheistic culture that we live in and the uh, the worship of that and the promotion of uh, 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 the po uh, promotion of the uh, pantheistic philosophies and how because they worship poly uh, polytheism and they promote pantheistic ideology or philosophy uh, so there is this transcendental meditation which where will take you to you know enlightenment and consciousness and folks like that within those religions like maybe buddhism and and the hinduism uh, they when they approach you they 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 make you feel small because you are not you know practicing what they are practicing but if you don't know what they believe and why they believe uh, what they believe and if you don't understand that uh, and to apply some of this logic the law of contradiction the law of uh, excluded middle the law of identity the law of non-contradiction uh, the law of uh, thermodynamics and you know the, the law of entropy and all those uh, though you know it, it, logic wouldn't win anyone over logic intellectual would not win anyone over but that is gonna help you so when you are reading your scriptures and you pull up one of your favorite scriptures and you are meditating on those passages and you know that it is as a result of what God in the person of Jesus Christ has done for you why which is why you believe in the scriptures so when someone come to you you know on his or her high horse because he is meditating and want to look down upon you uh, probably says well you just you know the the body the physical is in intrinsically you know evil so you cannot you know you know dwell on that then the person won't let you know that okay that is why I meditate so I go into this dynamism I go into this realm where I empty myself and find myself within myself you know by knowing what or being be, uh, getting equipped you know having the necessary tools in your toolbox make you stand firm when they come to you when they want to look down upon you when they want to belittle you he said no 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 hold it here you are mistaken so why islam appeals to african american males why 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 that um <laughs> it's amazing that motivations you know and the line of religious commitment uh from the nation of islam perspective that is what i'm going to be talking about and again i would like to address the personal motivations underlying religious commitment from the nation of islam perspective i just want to give you uh the statement that i wrote down so i can come clear certain things i have to just give it to you just as i've written it down and again 
the, in this episode 9, I believe I'm making sense. In this episode 9, I would like to address the personal motivations underlying religious commitment from the nation of Islam perspective. Why the message of Islam? Appealing to African American males of our culture. I don't want to go too much into that history because that will bore you, but I just want us to look at certain things here. You know, we can all agree huh, that more often than not, people commit to a religion in order to meet personal needs. Yes. What are those personal needs? In new, say, in new uh, religious uh, manifestations, for instance, what happens is, in particular, there is a focus on the transformation of the self. So you commit your life to a religion expecting this transformation. Transformation. So why Islam appeals to African-American males is what we are talking about. Hmm. I talk about, you know, when you commit, you commit yourself to a religion. You know, in, in Christianity, for instance, when I became born again, my life transformed and my life continued, you know, in that, in, in, in that, uh, 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 in that dynamics, my life continue to have a new life every day, if I put it like that. So religion, commitment to a religion, it is, it is, it is an expectation to meet some personal needs, all of it, all of it. And um, what are those personal needs? It could be, it could be, you know, adherence to false religion or not, but it comes, those personal needs can be intellectually, emotionally, social and spiritual needs. People all over are looking, as I was praying today, briefly before we started, you know, folks look for these loving relationship and a sense of connectedness a family there has atmosphere that is has this transcendent person that is in their life that is what religion does so why Islam appeals to African American males. I want to just uh, get you some basic thing here that I want to bring to your uh, understanding why and how you and I can, uh, you know, sort of like win them over. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be coming to, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be reading some scriptures, but uh, be, let, me, let me give you this before I go into the scriptures. And you're going to see the application in uh, that. Now, the nation, of, um, um, the nation of Islam promotes, remember I said, the commitment to rel religion, any religion, whether false or true, everyone seeks this personal transformation. You seek, you seek the face of someone who is bigger, wiser, you know, than you as an individual. So the nation of Islam, and, and again I said, we seek this intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, and then even family life. You take your family to a religious environment where the atmosphere is electric, el electrified by 
the presence of God and you expect something, you know, some level of transformation to hit your family, whether it is marriage, um, a, a relationship between your kids, whatever it is, we seek that. So Nation of Islam promotes social philosophy. And again, the, the question was, why is Islam or Islam appeals to African American males? The Nation of Islam promotes social philosophy that best represents the moral and spiritual needs of African American men. That is why they are, that is why the nation of Islam appeal or, or Islam appeals to African American males. Because the founder of the African uh, uh, nation of Islam, and then when you look at all that is going on, even uh, looking at uh, uh, Minister Farrakhan's ministry, and you look at those who follow him, you see that they have, the young men have respect, they dress well, they appear to be very humble, they tend to be people who have had to authority. So Nation of Islam, that's what it does. It, it, it promotes this social, it gives it, it give this uh, uh, social appeal to these young folks. Because in America, when you think about the 400 years history, African American is looking for this connectedness. Something he feels that he belongs to that he is not looked down upon. And Nation of Islam give them just that. Promote social philosophy that best represent the moral and spiritual needs of the African American men. That is key. That is the reason. And this, as they promote this philosophy, it, it, it's, it's also of self-help. And as they, they have this appeal, it, it, it gives them the opportunity to challenge the government and all things considered American. If you ever listen to African American uh, male who is a member of Nation of Islam, you hear that from them. They challenge what makes them American, why you cannot be American. So it gives them that. The, the question is why? Islam appeals to African American males. We're going to go into the scriptures. Don't worry. <laughs> I um, I want to read to you from a passage why I'm bringing this up because we first must know what appeals to them before we can talk or preach or give them the good news. We're going to go into uh, if it make any sense, you know, uh, if their religion has anything. But we got to know first what appeals to them. This is how Paul addressed the issue why I am doing this. In Acts chapter 17, in Acts chapter 17, let me see if I want to read from, 
um, Acts chapter 17. Um, let me start from verse 16. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed. When he saw that the city was full of idols, so he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with those who worship God as well as in the marketplaces every day with those who happen to be there. Verse, seven, verse 18 says, Some of these Ecuperians and Stoic philosophers also debated with him. Some said, What is this ignorant show of trying to say? Others replied, He seems to be a preacher of a foreign deities because he was telling the good news about Jesus Christ and the resurrection. Because, verse 20 says, because what you say sounds strange to us, and we want to know what these things mean. Hmm. Verse 21 says, now, all the Athenians and the foreigners residing there spent time or their time on nothing else but telling or hearing some new things or hearing something new that is where I'm coming to verse 22 Paul stood in the midst of the Arabacus and said, People of Athens, I see that you are extremely religious in every respect. That's the point. Paul first recognized their religiosity. Paul did not start his presentation until he recognized their sincere religious beliefs. So when I say in my question in a, a episode in this episode 9 why Islam appeals to African American males and I was saying that it appealed to them because the nation of Islam gave social and intellectual you know philosophy in that in that philosophy, the African-American males find self-help. They find something that they wouldn't otherwise find anywhere else. Unfortunately, even in Christianity, because what we're probably going to do in episode 10, we're going to go into why they see the white, the distinction between a white, uh, a white man, uh, a Christian, and Christianity in general. We'll do that in episode 10. But here, Paul first and foremost recognized. How did Paul recognize? He said when he stood there, he was waiting, and he, he realized that the city was filled with idols. Do you look around and see that your city, your state, your country is full of polytheism? Where there are many gods. And then, even in this, in Islam, uh, in episode 10, we're going to bring the distinction between the Sunnis and uh, the Shiites. Uh, but we're going to stay with this for now. Even this, within the nation of Islam, you know, the Islam itself is Orthodox Islam. This is slightly different, but we're going to stick here. So here, a why Islam appeals to African Americans? Paul, we are doing just what just what Paul did here. Paul first recognized their religiosity. We want to recognize number one, they are religious. But as Paul saw, according to Acts chapter seventeen, Paul realized that there were so many idols 
You know, we realize today there are so many religions. Even some would want you to believe that there are three major religions. Some, even some theologians fall for it. You know, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. True. But what we have in common, we are missing the two. Islam and that of Judaism are missing the core doctrine of the Judeo-Christian or Christianity. So here, as Paul says, so here, Paul see here that you see that you are extremely religious in every respect. We see here that the Islam, a uh, uh, nation of Islam, are extremely religious. We see that our culture is somewhat extremely religious. Don't we? We see it all over. See religion everywhere. This religion you tend to every corner. If it is Orthodox, uh, 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 Islam or nation of Islam, who uh, Minister Far Farrakhan heads now, Paul recognized their religion. And verse 23, this is what Paul says, For as I, I was passing through and observing the objects of your worship, I have found an altar on which was inscribed to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. First, Paul has to acknowledge. So we are doing here, we are acknowledging nation of Islam. Why Islam appeals to African American males, just as Paul did here. We recognize their religion. Paul realized here that in Athens that, oh, there was even an inscription. Um, scholars cannot ascertain that exact inscription, but it is believed that it's written somewhere uh, in other uh, forms. But here, Book of Art, Paul said, well, what you guys are worshiping ignorantly that is what I'm here to declare to you. Remember, Paul was Jew of Jew. Paul was a Pharisee. Paul knew the law. Paul knew the Torah. So for Paul to cross over as a Christian, Paul knew exactly what he's talking about. Why? Islam appeals to African-American males. Not too long ago, maybe about a, a month ago, I ran into uh, a brother who says after 30 plus years, he converted back to Islam. Let me, let me pause here. You hear me say this, I'm going to say it again. Anyone who was once, who claimed to be a Christian and renounced Christianity hasn't first has never been born again at the first place. Take that from me. That's my opinion, but there's no way. He may be going, he may be, he may have the level of Christianity for over 30 years, but have never been born again. Because your heart, once your heart has been transformed by the power of of the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy that cleansing power of the Holy Spirit. No, you can never, ever, ever go back. How do you do it? That stony heart has been replaced by the fleshly one. Did God? How did that happen? No. So here it is from me. Anyone who says, oh, I was a Christian, but I denounced Christ. The person has never been a Christian at the first place. No. If you are a true Christian, you know what I'm talking about. 
How many things do you endure in your life? How many temptations? How many times do you even fall? How many times have you been backsliding? Did you ever denounce Christ? No. Because you, you, you find it very, even impossible to do. You thought you could get out of it, but you realize there's nothing you could do. All you need to do is to repent, 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 and repent. The brother says, oh, after 30 something years, I have converted back to Islam. I looked at him, I'm like, no, you haven't been a Christian for those 30 years. No way. Why Islam appeals to African Americans. So here, when you this is when you read your scriptures, for instance, you pick up your uh, Acts chapter 17, and Paul here talking about the resurrection. It is the same resurrection that has made you and I who we are in Christ. It is the same resurrection because Christ, when Christ went to that cross and resurrected. That was 2,000 years ago. You were not here. I wasn't here. But how do we become Christians? Our sins has been charged to Christ's account. Just like you put, you know, you, you, you purchase a, a merchandise and the, the, the merchant or the creditor Charges your credit card and you pay later. When you and I are talking about the resurrection of Christ, when you and I are talking about why we are Christians and how Christ has changed, transformed, and continued to bring this sanctification, daily transification. Uh, sanctification to our life. When you and I are talking about that, and a, a fellow Muslim from nation of Islam come to tell you that no, you are in error, you are able to tell them number one, you have to recognize that truly I admire your sincerity. I truly admire. Uh, uh, who you are, but here is why I believe you are wrong. Why Islam appeals to African American males. Because socially, they have this social philosophy that they instill in them. When you go back to the history, even a lot of the na uh, nation of Islam have done a lot of good things in the African community. They've transformed communities. They've done social, uh, some social engineering. They, they brought out some good stuff. But does that make the religion, the true religion? No. That is a point. No. Does that make it equal as that of Christianity? No. Is that way to be, I mean, to gain eternity? No. Have they done some good things in their lives? Yes, of course. They have. As Paul is seen here in, in, in Athens, now I don't think everyone out there was evil. They were sincerely worshiping, as uh, Paul says. Yeah, even, even, even I, I even found an altar on which was inscribed. I'm reading verse 23 again. To an unknown God. So these guys are worshiping someone that they cannot know. Probably they do. Uh, they, they, they have the sense of knowing that this God. Somebody that cannot occupy a space. This is why when you read the Old Testament, the Bible, the, the, the God says, "You build a place that my name, my name, not He Himself, but the name of God will be there." 
because God is so big, He cannot occupy a space. No, His presence, His name. When we talk about physical location, for instance, as VMI, we're talking about a physical location that when we go to, we mention the name of God because remember, the name of God is an essential expression of his nature. The name of God is an essential expression of his nature. The name of God is an essential expression of his nature. So, the name, when we, we meet, even as I'm teaching now, the an essential expression of the nature of God, you find healing. That is an essential expression of his nature. He is a God of God who heals. He is a merciful God, an essential expression of his nature. He is love. He did not become love. He is love, an essential expression of his nature. He is a resurrection, an essential uh, expression of his nature. So why Islam appeals to African-American males? Again, it is because of the social stuff. The nation of the nation of Islam promotes social philosophy that best best represents the moral and spiritual needs of African Americans as a core. That is why it appeals to them. So how can a Christian, I mean, you know, bridge that gap? How do we do it? Because you and I have the truth, right? But first, we, we, we got to know uh, what appeals to them before we address the issue. How do we address it? Does black Islam recognizes the deity of Jesus Christ? That is where we start. Just as Paul here. In verse 24, in Acts chapter 17, the God who made the world and everything in it, he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not leave in shrines made by hands, neither Verse 25, neither is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives everyone life and breath in all things. Then verse 26, say, from one man he has made every nationality to live over the whole earth and has determined their appointed times and the boundaries of where they live. So the next question is, does black Islam recognizes the deity of, the deity of Jesus Christ? The answer is no. Although the philosophical aspect that gives them self, you know, uh, identity. Remember, our brothers here, you always have to remember the 400 years history. It is even according to history, the blacks that came here, most of them were originally Muslims before they got here Because of this the, the nature of the slavery where separation of families and things like that happened They became Christians through some of them uh, their 
masters, those who owned them when they were slaves. Unfortunately, we need, we need to know some of these things. See what I'm saying? So, Nation of Islam, as we, episode 10, uh, I'm going to bring in uh, Mohammed uh, Rauf, I believe his name is, and then I believe he started the Nation of Islam in 1913, and how uh, uh, the current uh, Minister Farrakhan, I believe, uh, uh, came in in 1977. We're going to go into that, but I want to bring this in before we go back in, so in episode uh, 10. I'll bring a little bit of history to that, but today I, I want to appeal to you. I want to talk, to, I'm talking to you about why this appeal to black male. Do they recognize Jesus as deity? No. See? So philosophy alone is not good enough. It's not good enough. When you and I talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, just as even Paul, according to Acts chapter 17, when Paul was preaching, making his presentation in a form of apologetics, defending the faith, they were not triggered until Paul mentioned that Christ resurrected. Then Paul, you know, uh, uh, triggered something in their minds. Do blacks recognize the deity of Jesus Christ? No, they don't. They don't. They dismiss, you know, uh, 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 the resurrection of Christ. They dismiss that outright. This is what um, uh, the, the founder of Islam, uh, Elijah Muhammad, says. He says, no one after death has ever, has ever gone any place but where they were carried. There is no heaven or hell other than on earth for you and me. And Jesus was no exception. His body is still in Palestine. And we remain there. We know that that is false. You and I know that. So this is what makes the uh, 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 nation of Islam, unfortunately, false religion. This is why you cannot fall for it. This is why you cannot uh, 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 say, I remember many, uh, maybe about two or three years ago, I met a lady who uh, came to our meeting a couple of times, but for some reason stop coming uh as she talking about she was talking about how islam uh we all worship the same god and i just took a few minutes to explain to her that no bring a distinction that remember uh, i said maybe you don't know this islam although they want to mention abraham as the father of both ishmael and that of isaac the 12 tribes of Israel did not come through Ishmael, came through Jacob. And Islam did not believe that Christ died, let alone resurrected. So both of us cannot be worshipping the same God. Although Ishmael was a son of Abraham, Isaac was also a son of Abraham. Isaac is the promised son. This is why Isaac gave birth to uh, 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 the 12 tribes come of Isaac, not through Ishmael. So, oh, so I don't want you to fall for that. You have the answer. The resurrection of Christ. The transformation that he has brought to bear upon your life. The continuous cleansing power that continue in your life cannot, would not, and has never come from Islamic religion. It did not come from the line of Ishmael. So I want you to have uh, some, 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 some courage and confidence 
Number one, you are not, you, you and I are going to do, we are doing this respectfully, right? Uh, first Peter chapter 3 verse 15, which was the, the um, foundation of, our, of this teaching. You got to be ready, okay? And uh, to give an answer uh, to anyone that asks you the hope that is in you. But you do that, you and I do that with respect and gentleness. So we must first, just as Paul did here in Acts chapter 17, we must first and foremost recognize, acknowledge their sincerity, who they are, respect them, and then we present the gospel to them. And then we can present our own um, testimony of what God did before, you know, we became who we are today. And I want to leave that there, then I'm going to pray with you again. Um, by the grace of God, next Sunday, which is going to be episode 